everyone welcome back to rts and welcome back to our four for four series and up today we have a couple of bonus layouts it's something we always do at the end of our series so if you've been playing along you probably have your four layouts completed and your four cards we've just been going right along yes and in layout one we did one photo layout two two photos and so forth if you wanted to that's just how we did the series but you don't have to and we also played with go to designs we played with the, the happy horizontal we played with the grid we played played with the band and then we played with the block very very fun and then of course we also recently just did our four cards how fun is that and so uh, I wanted to show something with my layouts is that also to my cards I want to put them here for a minute of course this is the baby round so I focused on older photos and uh, just of little ones in my family and so I wanted to show that even just picking those four pieces of paper with our buffer of course is that I use those four papers because if you go by mood and feel you know I'm always saying that mantra is that I used photos that was from the 90s from the 40s, <laughs> from the 60s, and then also to the late 60s. So what I'm saying is when you go by mood and feel, you don't have to worry about things matching anymore. You don't have to worry about, uh, well, uh, you know, do those photos go with that paper? If you go by mood and feel, you can use anything because in these four papers and these four layouts, my uh, photos span over 50 years. I mean, isn't that, I mean, that is just amazing of course you know baby colors how can you go wrong with baby colors you can and then with my cards those four pieces of paper uh i got two baby cards of course but then i got one easter and a birthday i mean all playing with the pastels so um i know i say that a lot because i remember back in the day for me i struggled when i would get photos I would have to have my photos to match. And if I had heritage in my brain, I would think I had to go get vintage and heritage papers to scrap uh, heritage photos. And no, you don't. That is pastels. You know, it just gives you the softness that you want to capture in this story about mom, my mom and her dad. And then also, too, uh, with this one here. These are from uh, the 60s. And, of course, you know, uh, my hubby's not a little baby in that, but it still gives that uh, feeling of, a, a, you know, a young child. So that's what I wanted to say. I hope I didn't get too long-winded. But I remember back in the day, if there was something vintage or black and white, I had to have vintage papers, and I had to use heritage papers and the dark earth tones, and you know what I'm talking about. No, uh, absolutely. I like black and whites and heritage because then you can use any color you want. That's just something I had to change my mind about uh, over the years. And so uh, that's what I wanted to show. So up for today, we are going to be working on two more layouts and they're going to be story based. So I don't even have to, uh, I don't even have to worry about photos. So, oh yes, sign me up for that. So, but I also love story based because it really is just about the story, not focusing on the photo, but you know, I love both. So the two papers that I'm going to use today as my main inspiration is this one from Bundle of Joy from Photoplay. I believe this was last year. Let me just double check. Oh, I don't think Photoplay puts a year on their papers. No, they don't. But I think, I know it was last year. This was by Becky Fleck. And I think Becky recently got married to her last name's not Fleck anymore. I think so. Um, I think that's the, the scuttlebutt. And so then my second piece of paper is definitely from Crate Paper. And it is from, does it say, the Maggie Holmes Carousel. It's the flip side of this beautiful floral. I'm using this love this day. Okay. And so how am I going to make a story-based page out of this? We'll come back. <laughs> Are we talking about that? But the first up on the block is this one. And so, of course, I wanted to talk about how do I approach a story based page uh, when it comes to something like this. Because I really don't have much of a process because it's very, very, very simple to do a story based page. Because this piece of paper is my story. It is my main embellishment. It's basically my main paper. All I have to do is just dress it up and record my story. I mean, that's how quick it is. And so I'm going to talk about um, how I'm going to approach this. What is my thoughts? How do I start this? Because I got asked some questions and then I'll come back with a finished page and then we'll rinse and repeat with the Maggie Holmes paper so uh, and definitely this is I just love this piece of paper I think this piece of paper here by Photoplay I think has been one of the prettiest 
baby papers I've ever seen <laughs> in 23 years of scrapbooking I truly think Becky outdid herself and this was from the line uh, about a little girl and I think there was also one about a little boy and so it wouldn't just be beautiful if you just got three pieces of this and you framed it and put it in a nursery or a little girl's room or if you got the boy side you know the boys uh, frame the those little pieces for the boys room I just think it's beautiful so how would I approach this so when I look at a piece of paper like this and I'm doing a story base okay I just love doing story based pages with a heavy icon piece because the work's already done all we have to do is just give it a pair of earrings you know dress it up that's all we have to do so when I'm looking at a design like this I will try to find a place where there's not so much design where I have a little bit of room to work or where something's repeating and I don't care if it's covered and so of course you see over here I have some blank space here and then of course I have some blank space over here okay and so I'm a left-handed person so I kind of like uh, I like this over here that just seems like it would fit better for me uh, and I think this is what I'm going to do and I think I'm going to cover up this area right here now how would I know that's okay because this image right here is exactly repeated right up in here and so I can leave this blank and see the image I can cover this up no, no one will be the wiser so I'm going to be working in this area okay and then what do I do from there well first of all then I usually give it a background so I've already picked out my cardstock which of course is going to be this uh, pretty little pink because the story I'm going to record is this song that I sang to my little one from the day she was born and probably I always will and it was just a little song I had made up it's only got four lines and I sang it to her all the time when I was putting her to sleep or when she was ill or didn't feel good or she was scared sometimes I still sing it to her oh I'm getting a little choked up okay so that's what I'm going to record today this little precious little story sorry that's the power of scrapbooking right there. Yes. So that's exactly what I'm going to do today. I am going to record this story. I mean, of over 20 years of singing this little ditty and this little lullaby to my little one, I'm finally going to record it. So I'm so excited about that. So once I decide on the icon piece, I decide where I'm going to go. And usually when a story based page, I try to have a small title, small, not in font size, but small as in how many words. So I usually just try to do one word because I don't want to cover up too much of this. So I already know that my story is going to be right here and it's going to be called lullaby okay and that's exactly I'm going to use one word title I think that works good for a, a story base because it catches your eye right off the bat so we're gonna have lullaby then I'm gonna have my journaling and so then what's next just some embellishing I mean honestly that is how quick it goes so of course with my kit <clears throat> I will look and see in my kit, of course, what do I have to go with this? So, of course, you know, anything that is of these beautiful pastel colors, I have so many colors represented here. So, anything that I had in my kit is going to be fine. But when I'm dealing with a story-based page, what I basically go with a lot is finishing touches. And so, that would be, you know, your enamel dots and your pearls and your breads and things like that. So, if you notice in this icon piece, what is it? It's critters. <laughs> balloons and clouds so that is what I'm going to look for first just to re-emphasize my story and bring this paper to life okay so in my kit and I tried to have this in a pile but you know how it goes uh, I had in my kit I had these clouds so of course I can use these clouds and just like this I could put that right over top of the clouds that's making the story this icon piece come back you know to come to life okay so I'm definitely going to be using those I don't have any balloons but I do have critters okay so of course you see <laughs> this beautiful piece of paper and I'm absolutely going to link this piece of paper uh, I will find a store and I will link it because I know it's still available it's just it's just precious I hope it's still available okay and so then what I'll do is I'm going to look for critters and so for me critters would be my breads and so that's what I'm going to do so you can see on my breads I have an owl and a lion and uh, what do I have here another owl so right there I have three I'm going to uh disperse those three breads and uh, I might do three clusters I may do two I may just do one it depends on what I, I want to do but then also too these finishing touches the gems and of course you know I have a bow that would be that would be so cute um, maybe to put it right on top of my title of lullaby so just playing with the finishing touches those enamel dots and those pearls 
Uh, and of course, you know, we had the bling <laughs> and I got the pink pearls, all these things. Oh, and then sequins. Oh yes. Yes. See what I'm saying? <laughs> all these little ones. And so basically when I'm working on a story based page, it's a title, it's my journaling and finishing touches. And then anything that can be specialized, like such as these clouds, uh, to, uh, you know, that will absolutely go with this icon piece. That's perfect. And then there's critter breads. I want to play with that. So I will stop there for a minute. I will come back. It won't take me very long. But you know how it is when you're trying to scrapbook, uh, you get 83 phone calls. <laughs> so I will come back and uh, I will talk a little bit more. But honestly, that is what it is. I'm going to uh, my journaling. And what do I have for our title choices? I have this fabric, which that's cute. And these were all in my baby kit. So every one of these would be fine. I mean, look at that. Would that be fun? Lullaby in the pink because she's a little girl or this gray that would really stand out. Now that would be a little too big for me. And I really don't want the yellow. The yellow won't show up. Okay. The gray's too big. <laughs> so it definitely will be the pink or the white. See, not very hard to figure out. Okay. I might do the lullaby because it's in that fabric, but then, um, uh, I might do it in this font or I may do it in this one. See, see which one shows up. I don't know. Or I could use this for the date. You know, I could do that. So, um, hold on. I will come back with a finished fast story based page with my little girl's lullaby. Okay. Hold on. Okay, so I'm back with my fast story base page. And so all I simply did was take this critter paper and trimmed it just a little bit on two sides so you could see my outside pink mat of my pink basil. And I love playing with colored cardstock in the last year or so. So I'm very happy about that. Of course, you know, so I had my little girl break out the pink. Absolutely. And so then that is what I did. Just adhere that down. And then, of course, with my title, it says lullaby. I glued all that down with my scotch quick dry. And then all also, too, I took a little bit of this pink cardstock that I had gutted from the back of that mat and gave my journaling block, my little lullaby to my little girl, and I put that behind that. And then what, if you'll see in the close-up, the close-ups is that I absolutely even put in some score lines to give it a little bit of a frame. I love scoring for a finishing touch, absolutely. So don't forget to keep that scoreboard handy or use the gully in your trimmer, okay? And so, of course, my corrected... Uh, journaling will go here after I'm done filming because just some info you don't want hanging online. And so then I'll, I'll just transfer those enamel shapes. And I think I'm going to hear that little bow just like that uh, once I put my corrected journaling on. And then, of course, for my clusters, I have one here, one here, and one here. And they basically all have the same type of embellishments. They all have one of these clouds, a bread, a pearl, and two rhinestones. They're just in different sizes. And that's what I did. Uh, and you'll see the close-ups. But that all that's all it is, is a bread and a pearl, a pink pearl, and a little cloud. And these are fabric clouds that matches that fabric title. Very, very fun. And then, uh, of course, some clear rhinestones. Because, you know, you've got to bring out the bling. And then I added three little twine bows just to make another visual triangle. And I adhered those twine bows with a simple little drop of this Scotch create super glue gel. I love this. I just love this product. And then of course, I think I'm going to adhere uh, the year up here in the corner. I think that's what I'm going to do. And that is simply all this page is. I have my title. Uh, of course, it's called Lullaby and my font. And even when I printed out my font, I went with something. I printed this in a gray and then I picked a font that would be you know, soft, light, and airy. So whenever you're printing something on your computer, your font choice can absolutely have a finishing touch as well with that color in gray and then also to the type of font you pick. So this little addition of this twine, I make a visual triangle and then these clusters here, there's five pieces in each one of these clusters. They're just different sizes. And that is all this page is very, very quick. And of course you see in the back, I did take some washi, covered up my breads, and that is how simple, <laughs> and I, I will, I will, um, I put my corrected journaling there, and of course I'll transfer those enamel hearts and that bling, it just gave it a little bit of something, and you'll see that in the close-ups. Okay, so now I'm going to be working on my second story base page, because this honestly takes like 20 minutes, honestly. It probably took me longer to pick a font choice than anything else because it's just it's very very simple it's just playing with items I had in my kit yes and of course you know with those breads I got in three more critters how fun is that okay so the next page I have here 
the story base page is this and there is so many ways to take this page now a lot of people would see this page uh, and this is also in uh, the carousel paper pad so this is a single sheet and I will tell you the single sheets the color is much prettier than in the paper pad, but they're more affordable in a paper pad. We talked about that in our paper pad party. But with this this Maggie Holmes paper, I know a lot of people saw that in a paper pad, and they're like, well, what am I going to do with that? I'm going to show you exactly what you can do with that. You don't even have to have a photo because your title is already here. I love this day! Exclamation point. So let's talk about this type of uh, page and how I consider this a story-based page and what can you do with this. Well, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, you could cut each one of these apart and you could play off of that. You could even put all, cut all of these apart and make up your own title uh, using these letters or just use the word love or just this day or his day or you know what I'm talking about. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it as a whole. I'm going to trim it down just a little bit as I did on my other uh, story base page. I'm going to give it another pink gingham background because of course it's about my little girl. Yes. And so this story is going to be about <laughs> the day that I brought my little girl home and I thought my heart was going to literally burst. I mean, I have never had that feeling before in my life. I remember this. I was telling my husband, I said, I feel like my heart's going to burst. I was just so happy. <laughs> yes. So love this day. And here comes the waterworks again. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay, moving on. So my plan for this is, is to absolutely leave this as it is. Love this day. And where you see this exclamation point, that's where my journaling is going to go. Yes. Yeah, so my title is honking. It's big. It's already done. Yes. Yeah, so I don't have to pull it any more alphas. This is my alpha. Okay. So then of course I'm going to have this pink background. So there you can see my colors. Uh, I have that, uh, the bold impact of that black. I have my pink. So I absolutely can just pull items from my kit that are pink and black and just be done with that. Or if I want to go with some baby pastels, then I can pull in the yellow and the turquoise. There's a purple flower. I could just play with all of that. Okay. The only thing I know I won't be doing is I won't be adding anything with any kind of text because this is so much text. I don't want the eye to uh, have to di differentiate from where you need to read because I will have journaling here. So I won't be doing everything that I add will purposely not have any writing on it because of the font on this paper. So I may choose just to play with the pink and the black. I mean, that would be very pretty. Look at that. Just playing with the pink and the black. I may do that. But you know, this is a baby page, you know. Um, so I might want to just play with the pastels because after this page, all these supplies will be putting, you know, get put back. Okay. So, um, of course I had these twine stars, you know, that I had made. So let's talk about something else as if you, we talked about that last page, what was in the, you know, what was in the design. So if you look in the design, each one of these little blocks have a little strip you know, we used to call, we used to do a scotch tape back in the day, but that's washi. So of course I have washi here. So I could absolutely take a small piece of washi or big piece, whatever you want. And you could follow that design and do that. Okay. And so it looks like each one of these letters are hanging up individually. Okay. So you could do that. I probably will do that because it's already in the design. Why not go with it? And of course for you mixed media gals, there's already some ink splotches. So get out your sprays and your inks and follow right along what's in the design. And then of course you can see there's some design down here with some washi tape, scotch tape. You could follow that along too. So I, I think I may do pink and yellow. Or I don't know, the turquoise is very pretty. Uh, then adding the yellow, but then adding the gray. I may get all four of those on there. Or I might, I might just do the pink and the black. Okay, because that's pretty too. You know, of course, then I could just take my pink washi. And I could put pink on each one of those. So it all depends. I don't know if I want to do all pink and black. I don't know. This is about the day I brought her home. So you know she was a newborn. So I think I might want to play with all these colors. I think so. Yes, because just look at this. I mean, I got to break out one of these duckies sometime. 
you know, I gotta break out a ducky. Um, yeah, that would be cute. Okay. Oh, say so I can maybe make a little cluster out of some duckies. Okay. So I will just play with these more pastel colors and see what I come up with. You know, I also have some wood veneer, but because the black is so black, I don't think I'm going to pull in the wood veneer just because it's the opposite. You know, um, this is a little too light to be playing with the black. Uh, so we'll see what I come up with. You know, I have all kinds of stuff. There's a little kitty cat. You know how it is with baby pages. <laughs> you just get carried away. Okay. So hang on and I will come back and we'll see what I decided to do. I will be printing out my journaling and it's going to go here. I'm going to absolutely be covering up that exclamation point. So if that means taking a die cut, maybe something a little bit bigger there or taking a piece of paper or gutting out a piece of this paper. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to gut this again and I will take a piece of this pink gingham and I will be cutting it down and covering up that block. And that is where my journaling is going to land and we'll go from there. Okay. So hang on. Okay, so I'm back with my finished page and what I simply did was take this Maggie Holmes paper and trimmed it down just a little bit on two sides so that you could see my pink gingham background mat. And then of course I used my photo corner in all four corners to give a little bit of softness because this is a baby page. And then I simply came down here, made a tag out of scraps, simply just cutting a block and snip snip on the corner. <laughs> That's all you have to do to make a tag. And then to make my reinforcer, I took my little three fourths inch uh, punch, my circle punch and I had this leftover baby waffle blanket weave and then I just punched a piece of that and then I took my crocodile my glorified hole punch and I just punched a little hole there for my twine that's all I simply did to make my own reinforcer okay you don't need a, a punch for that you can make it yourself and then I took an acetate piece uh, because you'll see that I'll tie in with some other acetate pieces and then I just layered and made some clusters with some red enamel shapes some sequins some pearls and a little bit of leftover some seek uh, some vellum all these little bits and bobs that are leftovers in your kit you can just use for tucking and making just a little bit of a visual triangle just by color then of course my journaling is just going to go here in these three strips it won't be a lot but it's just going to basically say the day that i brought her home uh and of course i'll have the date and how i thought my heart was going to burst because i was so full of love i was just enamored with that little thing <laughs> i still am today i'm still enamored with her and so then of course since this is my journaling spot and a little bit of embellishment then i i made this diagonal design and i took that acetate piece which was part of this crepe paper uh this crepe paper uh, embellishment ephemera uh, pack and that's all I did and so I wanted to say something when you're using acetate okay don't forget that a lot of your acetate pieces will have if you notice watch how I do this it will have this film right over the top of that so it what it is is that this little protective sheeting protects your image in packaging and manufacturing and that type of thing so don't forget to remove that little bit of a film uh, for your acetate pieces uh, and then also I just use some quick dry behind that on those acetate that's what I use for my acetate so if you see I have an acetate piece here and here and here just three of them and then of course I just use the same colors of some sequins and pearls and enamel shapes and just the same thing up there have a date up there in the corner and that is simply all this story based page is because if you look at what it says love this day that is the story because that still has been my favorite day in my whole world <laughs> this day i brought her home absolutely now one thing i did do for this um these letters love this day is that i absolutely use my wink of stella this is in the uh, glitter clear and you may not see it on film but in person each one of those black letters have glitter and all I simply did was take this and brush it over the black part of those letters now I'm going to have a video linked below uh, that Christina Warner taught us back in the day how to prime your Win Costello brush pens and then you never have to do that until you run out <laughs> yes and I will tell you it's been a couple years and I'm very very close to using a whole pen isn't that something this is just an absolutely gives you a little bit of wink of Stella yeah with little wink of little glitter love these pens but I will have that video linked below because I thought every time you went to use this you know it says push I thought you had to push every time you went to use this no you prime it once and you never have to push again so I will have Christina's video linked below excellent excellent video she did teaching us how to use that and then of course you did see I got my little ducky on there <laughs> I did I did get that little ducky and so then you notice that with this page my embellishment 
dimensions are very small because my design is very big. I don't want to, even in my previous page, I don't have a lot. It's not a heavy design because I'm letting the paper be the design. And then what you could do for this type of page is that each one of these little grids or blocks or squares, you could embellish each one of them with a little bit of something. You could have done that. But I didn't want to break up the block because it makes a word. And this makes a word. And this makes a word. So that's why I didn't separate all those into individual little embellishment squares, if that makes sense. So I think that rounds up with this and this. Yes, I think that rounds up. Uh, this video, as far as two extra bonus pages, absolutely love recording the story. Didn't have to have a photo, didn't have to look for a photo, didn't have to stress over a photo. Story-based pages is where it's at. And you'll see a lot more of that coming up on this channel. And then also, too, what will we have coming up in our next 4 for 4 series? Well, one of my lovely subscribers, Jeannie, she already called the mark and she said she wanted to see Summer in our next 4 for 4 series. So that will be coming up. We'll be using these same cuts, but then we're also going to be doing double page layouts yes so what will we do we'll absolutely be pulling basically two of each paper so keep that in your mind when you're thinking about uh, printing some summer photos snapping some summer photos and wanting to play with some summer photos that's what we have coming up i don't know if that'll be june july or august i'm not sure it depends on how much time i get to spend with my little one over the summer yes so that is what's coming up in our next four for four series but what we have next coming up we're still working on our photo series and then also too we have some giveaways coming up we have national scrapbook day event coming up so stay tuned we have a lot coming up and i want to thank every one of you uh for making this baby round series again popular and fun and very productive yes absolutely so that concludes our four for four series the baby round isn't it lovely to play with these colors to get these stories recorded? Yes, sign me up. So that is all I have for today at RTS. So you know what that means. Come back because you never know what we're going to do. Bye.